SummerSlam 2021 is on our doorstep and do not think otherwise. WWE wants you to watch this show and go, my word, that was the biggest pay-per-view they put on for the entire year. Because usually, of course, it's WrestleMania, but the pandemic and no fans or limited fans and the rain. Well, that didn't really work out this year, did it? But on paper, this does look like it's a super duper card. So fair play to them. And also all the murmurings are apparently it's not going to go that long. So I'm quite excited about it. Especially that their old main event with John Cena versus Roman Reigns. But what's going to happen from top to bottom? My name is Simon Miller. Welcome to What Culture Wrestling. And let's predict SummerSlam 2021. And get it wrong, but I try. We shall start with the Usos versus the Mysterios for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. And this is kind of a difficult tamale to try and predict because I don't know what WWE is going to do. Like the build has been fine and the build has been good, but really Rey Mysterio should turn on Dominic Mysterio after this and go, ha 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 son, I have proved once again that I birthed you and you will never take over me. But I don't want that because I love Ray. I love Dummy Boy. I just want them to be happy for the rest of their days. You also have to imagine that eventually we're going to go back to the whole Roman Reigns, Jimmy and Jay Uso storyline. So they probably need to keep the tag team belts. But if Ray and Dominic don't win, what the hell do you do with them after the fact? I mean, this is WWE, so we'll do rematch, 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 rematch. Probably until next year's WrestleMania, where eventually we can just kill the titles. Because who cares anymore? But this one is a little bit difficult. But I do think they'll have an excellent match because up to this point they have just had excellent matches. And don't forget you've got to include Dominic Mysterio in that who really has found his feet. But if I was going to make a guess, which was the point of this video, I would say that Jimmy and Jay win after Dominic Mysterio ignores his dad's advice, thinks that he knows better, and then he ruins it and Mysterios aren't able to get their tag titles back. How Ray deals with that, I don't know, but I suppose this is actually quite a decent narrative because it has me on my tootsie toes going, oh my God, I can't believe it. Which direction are we going to head? The point is I am going with the Usos after the family fall out. And next up, we'll move to the Raw Women's title as almost a superhero, Nikki almost a superhero, takes on Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley. And if we are going to go with the build here, surely Charlotte is walking away with this one Otherwise, what the hell have we been doing? Now, I do want to make it very clear. This corner of the internet's all like, man, I hope Charlotte Flair, she wins too many championships. She is a very, very good professional wrestler and she has her character down. So it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But ultimately, you are backing yourself into a corner. Because I think it's fair to say the Nikki Ash character hasn't really connected in the way that we would have hoped it would. And Rhea Ripley can absolutely connect with the audience. But you know a good way to do that? Give her the Raw Women's title. And what did she have up to a few weeks ago? The Raw Women's title it starts to hurt my brain. And that really is the problem with this feud. While everybody in it is a top tier professional wrestler, the story and the narrative and everything else around it, when it just doesn't really make any sense, certainly hasn't got me that hyped for this SummerSlam fight, and I really should. And I can see a world where Nikki Ash hits the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment, probably on Rhea Ripley, to get the surprise victory. But I'm going with what WWE usually does here, and Charlotte Flair will win. She will pin Nikki Ash, which means we can continue the Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley storyline. Hopefully that ends with Ripley getting her championship back, and then... I don't know, maybe she finds Eva Marie. And talking of Eva Marie, she too is going to be on SummerSlam. She takes on Alexa Bliss. Now you may want to sit down for this one, because I have come up with a crazy theory. Because I totally believe that everything that did happen on Raw between Dewdrop and Lily is going to tie into this match. Because the drop touched Lily, she has now been possessed by Alexa Bliss. And during this fight, Alexa will go voodoo, voodoo, magic, magic, magic. And Dewdrop will go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And she will slap or she will do something to Eva Marie, which causes Eva Marie to fall onto the mat. And Alexa Bliss will pin her. And then where we go next, I don't know. But I said it, it had to be said. And if this does happen too, man, I better be on social media. Because Twitter especially, <laughs> it's going to melt down. A fair play to WWE. They are really backing this story up. They came up with an idea and then they're just going and going and going. It actually makes me quite scared. And it makes me worried deep down in my tum tum. But yes, my prediction is Alexa Bliss wins via possession onto Dewdrop, who turns on Eva Marie. I'm just going to go now, push my button, ding, because if it does happen, I don't want people to shoot the messenger. There is a lot of crazy stuff on SummerSlam as well, because now let's move to Drew McIntyre, 
versus Jinder Mahal in a I've got a sword and I'm gonna stab you, bitch. And it all comes down to what WWE wants to do next. I totally believe that Drew McIntyre and Jinder Mahal could have a much better program than they have had. We just shouldn't have been focused on an inanimate object. But we did focus on the inanimate object and the only way to continue this is to have Jinder Mahal to win because it has been a little bit topsy-turvy. I don't think you want to do that. I think you want Drew to kick his ass, get all his momentum back before he goes on to fight somebody else. But given that Bobby Lashley is probably going to be the WWE Champion for a long while, meaning you can't put Drew back in the main event, I actually think Jinder's going to win here. And it's going to be Shanky and it's going to be Veer because even though the stipulation now states they're not allowed at ringside, they will come to ringside because WWE doesn't care about stipulations. They will try and touch this sword. Maybe they give it a nice massage. Drew McIntyre will freak out. Jinder Mahal will hit the class. One, two, three. And once again, I'm going right to social media going, tee hee hee because everyone's going to be so bad. And then Drew probably gets the sword and goes, Hurr! and stabs Jinder Mahal right in the heart. And he's going, oh, I'm dying. I can't believe you did this to me, Drew. I'm a very weird person. I have a very, very dark sense of humor, and I'm sorry. But I think Jinder will win. I don't know what the next pay-per-view is. I think it's Extreme Rules. I mean, come on, man. It's slapping you right in the face. Extreme Rules, and one of these guys has got a sword. Jinder winning, and then we do it round two. The Raw Tag Team Ties are also on the line as AJ Styles and Omos defend them against the reunited, and the best thing about Monday Night Raw, RK Bro. And let's just keep this nice and simple. Randy Orton has smashed this storyline. Riddle has smashed this storyline. I genuinely like them as a group. I want Randy to turn on Riddle down the line properly for a WrestleMania match. But here, they have to become the tag team champions. And again, WWE will then do rematch, 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 rematch. I do not care. Randy Orton and Riddle have to walk away with the championship belts. Otherwise, everything I believe and everything I know is poppycock. And you don't have to beat Omos. I know, oh, we love Omos. He's seven feet tall. We can never defeat him. By the way, I do love Omos. I think he's great. But at this point, AJ Styles has lost so many times. Plus, he did win on Raw, meaning he's due a loss. You can get away with it. I don't know what you do with Omos and AJ Styles after we've done the 47,000 rematches, but it's not my job to worry about. So again, nice and easy. RK Bro, brand new tag team champions at the Super Slam. Moving on, I think we then have the match that will probably steal the show, and it's Edge versus Seth Rollins. And the best part about it all is that we have focused on exactly what needed to be focused on. There's been no shenanigans here. Edge returned to WWE in 2014. Seth Rollins went up, oh, I'm gonna break your neck unless I get what I want. And now that Edge can fight again, he's gone, <laughs> Seth, I didn't appreciate that. You also cost me the universal title, so now I'm gonna whip your ass. And of course on SmackDown, we've been saying, oh, Seth Rollins is Edge light, but that should be taken as a massive compliment. Here we have a dude that can pretty much have a great match with everyone, taking on a dude who can pretty much have a great match with everyone. I am so excited about this. I think it's gonna be Fabo. I don't even care who wins and loses. Genuinely, if Edge gets the victory, we're like, oh man, well, who, hey, the guy I like got the victory. And if Seth Rollins does, we're like, oh wow, he'd be Edge a Hall of Famer. We should start taking him a little bit more seriously. So this really is WWE done right. But I guess I will say that Seth Rollins wins because I think they're gonna wanna do it again. And also between you and me, I think Adam Copeland just completely understands the wrestling industry and wrestling business and gets he can offer more by allowing Seth to beat him as opposed to him beating Seth. But yes, if you want a prediction for best match of the night from in-ring status, this is the one. Another one that's gone under the radar, mostly because the build hasn't been that good, is Sheamus versus Damian Priest for the United States Championship. And once more, I think this is gonna be pretty damn good. And it's all been kajangled because of everything with The Miz and John Morrison. But when you break it right down, Sheamus hits crazy hard when he gets into that ring. Damian Priest does the same. They're both big dudes. So if you wanna see big dudes slapping together man meat, well, WWE is gonna have you catered for, and have you catered for again when it comes to Goldberg versus Bobby Lashley. But that will probably be less technical than this one. I tell you, Sheamus is underrated. Damian Priest has got it right now. This one could be pretty damn good. The thing is, you can't change the title right now because again, we haven't built to that peak. Whereas Damian Priest did win it, you go, ah, oh, finally it's happened. So I actually think that Sheamus probably needs to cheat here. I bet Miz and Morrison get involved somehow. And then you build to round two, maybe even a round three. And on that round three, Damian Priest should absolutely be the US champ. And we've got to give him a long run. And unlike Sheamus, for the love of everything, can you put him in a damn feud? Still though, I don't have to worry about that now. That's all in the past. And in terms of of this Saturday night, I'm very excited about this. 
the two guys can go. And then we actually get to a match that may not happen. It is Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair for the SmackDown Women's title. But over the last few days, these two guys have been pulled from all their house show bookings and we don't even know why, they just haven't been cleared to compete. Given that I am filming this on the week of SummerSlam, obviously, unless something drastic is going to happen in the next 24, 48, 72 hours, well, it may be pulled off the show. And I hope that doesn't happen, because when you do run through the entire card, well, this is one of the most anticipated fights. It's also put WWE in a great position, because right now Bianca Belair is on an incredible run ever since she did win the title at WrestleMania, but Sasha Banks has only recently come back to SmackDown, Plus, she's now a badass heel, and she has Carmella and Zelina Vega as her, like, pseudo-group, whatever the hell it's going to be. So do you really want Sasha to lose that soon? But I'm not ready for Bianca Belair to have the title stripped away, so I am at a loss. That's exactly how it should be, especially with something like SummerSlam. You should be able to come up with 68,249 different ways that this could go, and every single one of them would make sense because we've just been planting seeds and writing good stories. Ultimately though, Sasha now does have two goons, again Carmella and Zelina Vega fresh off the Street Fighter tournament, and there's no way they've just been thrown in there to have a little bit of a party. So very sadly, I do think this finishes with distraction. Somebody get the board ready. And we should be doing something like that in order to protect Bianca Belair, because if we do protect her in the right way, she will become an even bigger megastar than she is now. And also, if Sasha is going to lead up a new faction, you want to have gold around her waist. It just makes them more legit straight away. So I'm going with Sasha Banks after outside interference, <laughs> because it is WWE, and they love it. If you don't watch my Ups and Downs show, we have been counting all of the distraction finishes throughout the year, and as I'm saying these words, we are up to 92, and we're only in August, 150. Here we come. Sasha wins. Goldberg has come back to the WWE as well, and he is going to take on Bobby Lashley for the WWE title. And this has caused some people to have some, well, bad times because they don't like it. But I like it because this is how it should go. We shouldn't go longer than maybe 120, 180 seconds at a push. And Bobby Lashley should do to Goldberg what Goldberg has been doing to people for the last 20 years. So no matter what Billy Boy comes up with, Bobby Lashley has an answer. He then does destroy and obliterate and eviscerate Goldberg. And he pins him. And the next time Roy comes out, he says, what did I tell you? Who is the man now? Oh, that's right. It's me, Bob Lashley. And if you do do that, you have used Bill Goldberg in the best way possible. If you want to bring him back in six months' time, you're not going to have ruined him. Like He's a mid-50-year-old man by now. It doesn't matter. But you will have turned Lashley into this absolute unit. Let's face it, he's already halfway there. And if he does get hit with a spear or jackhammer, let Bobby Lashley no-sell that repeated record like Goldberg used to no-sell everybody else's moves 20 or so years ago. That would be so good. It'll have me hooping and hollering. And I'm going to bet that WWE knows this. And they clearly like Bobby Lashley. And MVP will be out there as well. So I'm going to keep everything crossed and then sort of peep when I open, when I am watching it. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to be very disappointed. But Bobby will win. Which brings us to the main event of the evening for the Universal Championship, which is Roman Reigns versus John Cena. And just a round of applause all around. Because if we are taking SummerSlam as the biggest event of the year, this truly does feel like a worthy main event. And that gets a thumbs up. And as good of a job that WWE has done of going, oh my gosh, if John Cena wins the Universal Champion here, that will be his 17th one, which will break the record. There is no way on this planet that Roman Reigns is going to lose for two very specific reasons. And the first of these is that John Cena, soon after SummerSlam, is going back to Hollywood to film his movies. And he maybe has one match with Finn Balor, but we'll talk about that in one second. But you do not put one of your top titles on someone when they're not going to be around. We've seen how that worked in the past. But two, it seems like the super duper big plan for Roman Reigns is to fight The Rock at next year's WrestleMania. And trust me, Dwayne Johnson will be on the phone going, hey Vince, you ain't gonna have John Cena win, are you? Because I wanna be the guy to beat him. Or in short, and that's not the plan, I won't take him on if he's already lost. Click, film a film. So yeah, Roman Reigns has to stay strong for The Rock, because no matter how big a star Cena is, Dwayne Johnson is an even bigger one. Now the only slight caveat to this is that maybe, just maybe, you could involve Finn Balor, because of course everything that happened recently with Finn Balor and Roman Reigns. So I do have this tiny bit of my stomach just here that can see a scenario where John Cena is about to win, and I know I'm going to sound crazy, Finn Balor comes out and he costs John Cena the match, allowing Roman Reigns to retain, and then before John Cena does go back to Hollywood, we 
do do Finn Balor versus John Cena. Now I'm sure this is just me being a massive nerd and coming up with things that I want to see, but I don't know. It popped in my head and I was like, well, I'm doing the predictions video, so I may as well say it out loud because again, if it does happen, I look awesome. And if it doesn't, what? I look like a fool? Welcome to my life. So yes, Roman Reigns will win, hook or by crook. And if it's not by Finn Balor, well, that does tear me a little bit. The Usos will probably get involved. But I do think there's going to be some kind of nonsense because mostly, again, it is WWE. Now, that is 10 matches, which is way more than enough. We don't need to announce any more. But could I see Shinsuke Nakamura versus Apollo Crews in an Intercontinental title rematch on the pre-show? Yes. And would Shinsuke Nakamura retain? Yes, he would. So there you go, there are my SummerSlam 2021 predictions. Now make sure you go in the comments below and let me know what do you think that's gonna happen at SummerSlam and we can compare and contrast notes when we get to Saturday night. Then please do like the video, share the video and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com so you can stay up to date with any new announcements for SummerSlam. Make sure you come say hello on social media. I get mad when all that crazy stuff happens and we've got loads of videos here on What Culture Wrestling. Give another one a click. My name is Simon for What Culture. Thank you for joining me as always. And I will see you at the hottest event of the summer.